This is Amateur Logic, episode 148 for October 15th, 2020, our 15th anniversary. This episode of Amateur Logic is brought to you by MFJ, the world leaders in ham radio accessories at mfjenterprises.com, and by ICOM. Get out and be active with the perfect QRP companion, ICOM's new IC705 and its optional multifunction backpack. Good evening and welcome to another action-packed adventure of AmateurLogic.tv. This is our 15th anniversary extravaganza and we've assembled the crew here. Over on the right, we've got Dean Martin, played by Tommy Martin. We've got the cheap old man, played by Emil. We've got the... I don't know how to say. I was going to say the thunder from up under, but that's not. I don't know. <laughs> up over. Yeah, up <laughs> over. Yeah. And our old friend from down under, Peter VK3PB. Good evening, everybody. G'day, guys. G'day, everybody. Good to be here again. And we're, we're glad Peter could join us tonight. We, we haven't. Well, I asked him a while back if he could, and he said, yeah. He could be here. I asked Jim as well, but Jim is somewhere up north in a camper traveling. I don't know where all he's traveling. I think he was supposed to be in New York State at a park this weekend. Yeah, he is. I saw saw some I I believe he said he was boondogging in upstate New York. Yeah. So we'll miss Jim tonight. Wish he could be here, but I think he's having a good time nonetheless. I've seen some of his posts he had made, you know, along his route there. So I don't know where all he's going, but that's where he should be tonight. I don't know if it's chilly up there. It might be. I imagine it is. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know how long he's down there, but I think next week he he might be in for a bit of a shocker. I hope he's got a heater in that thing. Yeah. (laughs) Mm. Well, you know, Jim... Lived in Alaska in a tent, so I'm sure he's up for it. Oh, yeah, he'll he'll do fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a short stint in the tent, wasn't it? Well, I, yeah, I don't think he stayed in there very long. He he was going to claim some of that free land, but it just didn't work out like he had hoped. Um, but <laughs> that's a story for another time. We'll have to have him back and tell us about that sometime because it's some words of wisdom that could help some other folks out. Well, it's uh, it's going to be a fun episode tonight. Fifteen years of amateur logic. Uh, Tommy, anything in particular to say about that? What do you think? Uh, it's it's just hard to believe it's been fifteen years. Like I said before, I, I remember like it was yesterday when we did the first one and wondering if there would even be a second one. And here we are, fifteen years later. Yeah. So who knows how long it will keep going. Yeah. I guess as long as, as people keep hanging out here and, and, uh, and watching the videos and encouraging this on, who knows? But anyway, appreciate all the support from everybody for all these many years. Yeah. And we look forward to some more. And, Peter, you were there for a lot of those years. I don't remember uh-huh. exactly where you came in, but it it wasn't too far into... you know. If you recall, show. you did 12 episodes, right? You took like about six months break and then I came in on episode 13 and then thereafter but what was really the funny story is that uh, I only expected to be there for one episode <laughs> and then you said oh what are you doing next month and I went what <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I was there for a while 
Well, but uh, look, anyway, yeah, it, was, it was great, and uh, you know, I've moved on to other things. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm sort of thinking that maybe I might be able to make a contribution uh, in the not too distant future of some kind. Maybe something to do with um, the astrophotography or telescopes that uh, you know that I'm, I'm uh, getting involved in. Uh, but something that would be very cheap, which would make, of course, Emil very happy, <laughs> you yeah. know. Uh, and uh, because astro, uh, I should say, astronomy and uh, what is it? Uh, astronomy and uh, amateur radio go nicely together because astronomy is basically about light, and light is one, the one tetrahertz band. And so a lot of the things you learn in amateur radio are actually applicable to astronomy, hmm. and uh, which is which comes in handy. Um, particularly where you're trying to photograph things that are really, really, really faint. And so uh, you've got to, okay, how am I going to get more more signal in but less noise? Same deal again. The, yeah. the same thing we're always trying to do in amateur radio. Cool. Emil, you've been here for, I don't know how long you've been here. You've come and gone. And yeah. So I, I, I really remember know. I remember being in the episode uh maybe in the thirties um with uh Don. Nineteen <laughs> thirties? No, not not in the nineteen thirties, <laughs> but with uh Don Wilbanks. I remember that was the first one where I, I brought the um the mast. He was he was doing a ham fest somewhere and then I came in with the uh cheap old P V C mast that's still out there to this day. Cheap but still there. Just wow. like me. <laughs> well that's a real testament to the strength of PVC. Uh, yeah, I think Jim said it best back then, right? There's nothing you can't do with PVC, and now every ham loves it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. True. And, Mike, you've been with us over the years a number of times, and more recently on a, on a steady course there, but you really got back in with the Photoshops years ago. What, you know... What were you thinking, man? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I thought, hmm, this is too good to pass up. But, um, I mean, uh, over the years, I've had a lot of fun in the chat room, as you know, and a lot of the folks that um, that are still there in the chat room tonight. Um, I used to hang out in the chat room, and uh, and then it kind of led to the Google Plus uh, postings of the Photoshop. And I think the first one was, uh, I think it was you, Peter, and uh, Tommy as the three amigos. Oh, yes. And, um, I, I think remember. that's the one that started it all. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't really know. And it's continued to this day. I mean, as you know, the billboards for the Amateur Logic Soundcheck Net, I have a lot of fun doing those each week. And... Uh, mm. Try to try to mix it up a little and and add a, a lighten it up a little bit by because um, most of the nets that you you uh, you engage in on the radio are are formal nets and uh, you know there's a purpose to them but you know, the the whole purpose of this net was uh, you know Tommy Tommy started it because we were all stuck at home and and we needed something to kind of as a distraction take our minds off of other things and I thought that was kind of a kind of a way to do it and uh it just sort of led one thing led to another and you know i started giving various personas or suggested various personas uh to the net controller each week and it just uh kind of stuck cool well, you know i'm sure most everyone will agree that some of the funniest episodes we had were some of the christmas episodes where you had special contributions Mm -hmm. Yeah, and don't forget about those New Year's Eve episodes. Oh yeah, uh, those too. Yeah, some of some of them are trying to. Some of the participants are trying to forget those. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> they were they were still pretty funny, and they were they were good sports for for allowing us to do that. Yeah, you know, I I've noticed that uh, just in more recent times, there's been a slight veering towards the Rat Pack. I see quite a few Rat Pack photos there. Um, you know, with uh, Dean Martin and uh, what is it, uh, Frank Sinatra, etc. All the members of uh, that group. Uh, clearly, uh, you're, you're big fans. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah well, who's I, not? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, now that Tommy's dusted off the microphone and is doing the act again. <laughs> That's right. He's he's back on the road on tour. <laughs> well. Uh, 
Peter, why not, well, before we do that, let me just mention anytime we're streaming live, we've got a chat room going at the same time. AmateurLogic.tv slash chat. You can join in uh, the chat room there and uh, see what's going on in there at the same time that you're watching the show live. But there's uh, something we should make you aware of, isn't it, email? Yeah. You know, uh, th there's quite the crowd in here uh, at the amateurlogic.tv slash chat room. And uh, wow, I I'm counting 85 people in here, so it might be well past more than half the fun tonight, George. Wow, that is a possibility. Yeah, I would say that's uh, more than the average number. But still, there's one question that remains, uh, Tommy. If, well, all I can say is if you're not in the chat room, then you're missing half the fun. If you're watching the live stream, too. Uh, and, Peter, the remaining question is... Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I get stuck on this one, too. Question. Oh, Mike, do you know the, an the, the other question? I, I know the answer, but I want to say it doesn't matter which half, because either one of them is going to be a blast, I think. Uh, but the the official answer is which half? Yeah, I failed the pop quiz right there. I, I can't believe that. Yeah. Well, we're going to take it's going to take me fifteen more years to get it right. So, you may want to jump in there. Of course, we're going to be giving away this ICOM IC705, the new QRP rig that just uh, hit the market here in the U.S. recently, along with a nice prize package. And, you know, people have registered to win for that, and we'll be announcing uh, from the drawing uh, who's actually going to win that. We've got uh, one really nice consolation prize as well, plus we've got a number of other items that have been gathering around the studio here that we like to, to give out from time to time, especially at, at a time like this. So we'll be doing some other smaller Constellation prizes as well that you might want to get in on. Some of those will be chosen out of people who had previously registered for the radio drawing. Others we're just going to pick out right from the chat room as we go live. So uh, if you're not in the chat room, you know, and you can, you may want to get in there because uh, it might pick up, uh, you know, a piece of swag or something uh, toward the end of the show here if you don't win the radio. So, and George, yes. George, just to clarify, this is not the cardboard edition 705, right? Well, I've got that. If uh, we could give that away too, but no, this we, is the real should, thing. We should send that one to a mill. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> the cheap version. It doesn't get any cheaper than that. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Sapo. Oh, 705. You. What impedance is cardboard? Wet or dry? Fairly, it's a high impedance microphone. I know that. <laughs> Didn't All they right. used to make capacitors out of paper? They sure did. Yep. Yeah. You'll have to supply your own tin foil, though. Well, Peter, mm -hmm. why don't you bring us up to date? I mean, I don't know exactly when the last time we saw you was. Has it been a year yet? It's probably about a year, I would say. Um, yeah, the situation is that I've, I'm now in semi-retirement, um, having retired uh, after being a public servant for 34 years. And uh, I immediately took up doing a course, a free course that was offered to me in cybersecurity. And uh, I'm just nearing the end of that. We've got about eight weeks to go, past everything so far. Much tougher course than I expected um, because uh, they demand 100% pass rate which is pretty incredible. Um, but, uh, yeah, you get the, you, you get a couple of goes at each exam, which is good. Um, and uh, so I'm just sort of at that stage of considering, well, what do I want to do after that? Um, so, But, of course, you know, you've got the whole situation around us at the moment, which is not uh, particularly helpful in terms of uh, employment. So um, well, we'll, just, we'll, we'll see uh, what comes in the new year and what opportunities come up and, uh, hopefully, I, I'd like to do something or got maybe work part time in a science capacity, maybe with CSIRO or NASA or ESA, 
Uh, that would be great if I could find a niche, niche there, but um, just a question of what opportunities uh, present themselves. Uh, apart from that, um, I um, just, just am starting to get into astronomy. I've just got a, a second hand, well, it's actually new, but I got it at a discount, uh, a computerized mount with a 130p uh, sky watcher uh, telescope. And so uh, I'm just learning to use that and to look at the night sky, uh, which is a little difficult because I'm in a very light polluted area here in uh, in Melbourne. But it, when when uh, things once our lockdown is finished, hopefully I'll be able to get out into the countryside and uh, take advantage of the clear skies out there. Cool. And I understand. Well, y'all are are approaching the summer months down there. We're approaching winter here, so. Um your COVID rates have, have dropped substantially down there. That's that's a good thing. I, unfortunately, yeah. ours is headed the other way. Yeah, just to, to fill people in for who may not be aware of the situation in Australia, uh, basically um, we had a sort of more or less nationwide lockdown, uh, although everything's sort of done state by state. But we had that back, I don't know, May, June, earlier in the year. We got our numbers down relatively low. And when I say low, uh, we never had the big, huge outbreak that Europe and America have had, right? Uh, and we got onto it very early. So we had lockdowns. We reduced the numbers down to a, you know, a handful a day. And what's happened is around the states around Australia, that's continued on. It hasn't increased at all. However, in Victoria, we had a major outbreak. And uh, we were at one stage, we're up to 750 people, uh, new uh, uh, people getting infected every day. And what happened is we've had a very hard lockdown for about the last three, three and a half months. And uh, as a result, uh, just today it was announced we've got one new case. So uh, we're going to probably come out of that lockdown progressively. But uh, the hope is that we might even potentially be able to eradicate it, as New Zealand did at one stage um, in Victoria, which uh, would allow us to have, go back to having a more or less normal life for a period of time at least. So uh, we're, uh, everybody's done it hard, but we've had a good result. Uh, and we've had, uh, without getting political, uh, in terms of both sides of politics, because uh, one side is federal, the other side is state, um, basically uh, our leaders have done a really, really good job um, in, in leading us through that and, uh, you know, uh, uh, bringing people to, to the lockdown and achieving a good result at the end of the day. So, uh, yeah, so we're hopeful that uh, once we've got it down, we'll be able to keep it down. Uh, we've improved our contract tracing, which is another thing, having lots of tests, which is great. Um, and people are doing, most people are doing the right thing, and that's, that's what really makes the difference. Yeah. It, you know, it, the numbers are up and down here uh, and different in different states, and we've had lockdowns, and, and you know, mm. all that comes down to the state level as to whether or not there's a lockdown in that state and uh, mask mandates and all such as that. So it, it's different in different parts of the country and in different states. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. really hard to know exactly what's the right thing to do there. Me, I, I wear a mask when I go out, mm -hmm. you know. Myself and, too, yep. And to try to social Hot. distance and use, a, you know, uh, hand sanitizers and all that. And other folks uh, are not doing that, but. You know, mm. it's in this it, country that you're kind of free to choose that in most areas. But I'm I'm yeah. playing the safe side. Yeah, I, I, I'd back you up on that, George. Look, there's a lot of, uh, unfortunately, from what I understand in the U.S., uh, there's been a lot of politics around this, okay? But just leave the politics aside. Follow the science, okay? Things like masks, uh, hand sanitizer, uh, reducing the number of people that you're mixing with, these things really do make a difference and do save, save lives. And that's not a right-wing or a left-wing thing. That's just plain science. So, uh, uh, you know, d uh, particularly as we've got in the amateur radio fraternity, people are, uh, you know, getting on a little bit, and so they're at greater risk. So, uh, you know, uh, just uh, uh, follow you. If you in any doubt, go ask your doctor what, and take your doctor's advice and he'll set you on the right path. But on to a happier note. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, with that, 
Tommy, you you've been kind of happy here lately. I'll I'll have to say that, but you you can tell us more about that in just a second because first I believe email. Well, he's kind of happy too. He got an email this time around, <laughs> and it's one about something that is free. That puts a smile on his face every time. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> The uh, the email I got is also you know we talk a lot about Raspberry Pis here. Um, besides you know electronics and amateur astronomy, thank you, Peter. Um, so uh, I got an email from uh, K7HII out of Washington, uh, in the Northwest. He says, uh, Emil, you are a Raspberry Pi fanatic. Good observation. And looking at your shack studio, it seems you're interested in music. So this might be of interest. Traction is offering their Waveform DAW, which I believe is Digital Audio Workstation, um, for free. It works with Mac OS, Windows, Linux, and the Raspberry Pi. He says, I've not tried it since I have a DAW already that I've been using for years, but this version of Waveform works with a Pi, and it's free. Cha-ching, Roy, uh, Ray. Um, and that's what made, he said, that's what made him think of me. <laughs> hi, hi. All right. It's, uh, so the software was traction and I guess he, he noticed that I was uh, a musician based on the studio here. I played guitar and piano for years and, uh, I do have a DAW, so I might have to try that out. So thanks for the, uh, recommendation, Ray. It's K7HII out of Washington. Cool. Yeah. I, you know, I've heard of traction. And I have not tried it, but it sounds like something I may need to install on my Pi. I, normally, if I'm doing audio editing, I, you know, I'm probably going to be on something a little more powerful than that. But could could be handy, you know. You might want to carry one in your truck or something, you know, just in case the occasion occurs, you need to do some multi-track editing on the road. <laughs> you never know. You just yeah. never know. The Pi is so portable. Yeah, and we do like the Raspberry Pis here, uh, and I've built a number of projects with them and use them for different things. Naturally, a hotspot, that's a big use for them. But I've been playing with these lately. You know, I, I really like the Arduinos, too, the little microcontrollers. This mm -hmm. is, uh, well... Is that a Nano, George? No, that's not a Nano. This is an ESP8266. It's okay. a little microcontroller that also has built-in Wi-Fi. These things are, are really cheap, and they have written the libraries and the drivers and all, so it's compatible with Arduino programming. So I've been writing some software to run on one of these and having a fun time with it. I was going to show it to you a couple of months ago, but the project is just not finished yet. I'm still working on it. But uh, for just a few bucks, you can do something pretty cool with this. So I'll, we'll be looking more at that in the future here. But speaking of pretty cool that you can do, Tommy's got a pretty cool new toy over there. Uh, Tommy, why don't you tell us about it? Well, it looks a lot like the one we're going to be giving away today. I got my 705 in as well, actually the same day that uh, that one came and uh, I've had a really busy schedule at work, and then my first free weekend, there was a hurricane blowing through, so I did a kind of a once-over on it and found a few kind of neat things about it, so let's take a look at that. The moment I've been waiting for for a good while, I got my IC705 in. Pretty excited about that. As you can see on the screen, I went ahead and unboxed it and, and did the preliminary setup and got it set up for my hotspot, so I could at least use that. As luck would have it, there's a hurricane going on outside, and while well, it's not that bad, it's pretty windy and rain in here, um, but it's not terrible, but it is too bad to take it out into the field and try to use it like that. So what I'm going to do is kind of show you a few of the things that I've found on it as I was setting it up. We'll check the firmware, and I believe there's an update out for it, and we'll go ahead updating the firmware. Hopefully by next month I will have had it out in the field and used it some and, and got a good video for you, uh, practical usage. Anyway, let's get started. 
One thing I was concerned with was usage on this speaker mic, but it looks like Icom took care of that. The, uh, there's a little ring that comes with the radio, and then there's a little angle bracket, as you can see right there. And that, what that does, it gives uh, a little loop so you don't have stress on the connector here for the speaker mic. So to put that on, you just loosen the little ground screw here. And then you just screw this in. That'll give it some relief so you won't have pulling on the connector. It uh, gives you that little loop right there. Something else I found pretty interesting is the way the battery can be charged. So let's look over here at the USB port. First of all, let's take the battery out. It comes with a higher capacity battery than the one that came with my ID51. This is a 1800 milliamps battery. But anyway, it lasts pretty good while from my usage around here. But uh, the interesting thing is the micro USB port over here can be used to power the radio in receive mode. I've got my little Anchor 21,000 milliamp hour battery. I'll plug that up. See, it comes, comes on. And we can actually power the radio. Like that. You can't transmit like that, but if you want to receive or you're sitting around the campsite or whatever and you need to charge, you can charge from one of these portable batteries. So we'll put that on. Make sure you push that firm because it's a good tight fit right there. You'll hear a double click. And we'll hook this back up. Now we've got the charge light on showing that the battery's being charged. If we turn the radio on, If you operate it like this and key up the microphone, the transmit is going to happen by using the, the battery that's attached to the back. Um, but this will continue to charge your battery. Now we can see the DC from the indicator right here that the battery is charging from this portable battery right here. It took me about three hours yesterday to charge it up from nearly dead uh, where I'd been playing with it around here. And that's not really too bad, but it does give you another way to manage your battery. Another way to charge the battery is to use this battery, this uh, external power jack right here. The radio comes with this cable. It's got a coaxial connector and it's fused. But if you plug this in to a 12 volt battery or 13.8 volts, It'll charge your battery up in about two hours or so. Uh, all that's listed in the manual that you can download. So the battery management functionality on here, I'm pretty excited about. Icom's always been really good about supporting the radios and, and fixing any little weirdness things that comes up in the firmware that just kind of happens for many manufacturer from time to time. But they also add new features things as well sometimes so let's check and see what the firmware is and see if there's one available and if it is we'll go ahead and update it so to get to that we'll go to menu set others information and version and I can see the main CPU is one point let's go ahead and find any updates for the 705 so I'll just put 705 in the search bar here And it came up with uh, programming software. You won't, you'll want that. The USB driver, install that before you plug the radio up to the computer. Updated GPS data and repeater list and firmware. And we've got version 1.12. The changes are listed. So stuff to optimize the battery indicator. So I definitely want that so my battery readout it looks right. So let's go ahead and download it. Agree. Download. You definitely want a micro SD card in your radio to get the full benefit of it. You can record your QSOs, save your data, a uh, lot, lot of cool things in there. Um, let's go ahead and pull the SD card out. So I've got a little SD card reader here that I'll put it in and we'll load it into the computer. Okay. 
There's my 705 folder. I'll open the zip file. I'll pull the firmware file out and put it into the root of my SD card. And we'll eject the card properly. And let's put it back in the radio. When you put your little micro SD card in the radio, be sure you put it in the right direction. Uh, it's real easy to jam micro SD cards into the slot of any device like that because they're so small. It's sometimes a little difficult to tell. So let's go ahead and load it up. So power up. One point one. And we'll hit menu, set, SD card, firmware update, scroll down, yes, make a backup, yes I've already done that, oh, it actually offered to make the backup and it's doing it now. And there's the firmware we want to put in start updating to do the update you're going to need to hold down the yes button to confirm so that you don't accidentally update something that you didn't intend judging from the screen here it looks like i did not lose my settings which is good let's go check our version same thing set go down all the way down to others information version and you can see that we're up to 1.12, so the update worked. Now my radio's got the current firmware and I'm good to go. Uh, like I said earlier, this is uh, just a kind of an overview of the radio, how to get the firmware updated, and just a few things that I found. If there's anything you'd like to see, let me know. Uh, and I'll be doing some other videos on practical usage out in the field with how long the battery lasts, things like that. Um, so, but if there's anything else you want to see, like I said, just let me know. The battery management stuff is really cool. I was glad to see that. The ability to charge from a portable battery like this and operate at the same time and just use it for receive off of this. Incidentally, yesterday when I told you I ch charged it, I only used one of these dots of my battery capacity. Now, I'm sure it would have gone down because these aren't really accurate, but uh, it just made a small dent in the charge of this 21,000 milliamp hour battery. So I suspect I could get quite a number of recharges off of my little HD batteries on the back of my 705 here on a camping trip or a hiking trip. I'll be getting some other batteries in so I can get the full 10 watts on HF out of this as I use it some. Um, but as for right now, I don't have anything that's portable enough to carry around with me, but I'll get something ordered soon and we'll do some experimenting with that as well. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Save three. I'm really impressed with what ICOM did. They didn't put a, you know, a proprietary connector for the mic and they yeah. added that strain relief. That was a really, uh, really nice idea they did there. Yeah, it was. I, that was one thing. I've, I've never had a lot of luck out of those speaker mics. But that one actually feels really substantial. A lot of them feel real flimsy, cheap, but that, that feels really good. And the connectors are good and sturdy, too. But I've never had a lot of luck with those connectors down there. I've almost always had to cut those off and replace. Oops. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, just... uh, yeah, the little, I found that little uh, hook in the bag. I'm like, what is this? I checked it out. So that was a nice surprise. Awesome. They, they thought about a lot of the little details on there for sure. I saw that in the bag, and I I had no idea what it was, and now I know. But I gotta say, yeah. that little radio man, you would not know that you were running a portable. I mean, it's it's just like a base radio. Uh huh. It's got it's, all. It's really awesome. I, I can't wait to take it out. Well, well, I hate to take well, this it, one out because it's going to be in the box, being shipped. To some lucky winner a little later after the show here tonight. But 
Is that, really? is that a left-handed mic or a right-handed mic, uh, George? <laughs> um, you can turn the clip on the back so you can wear it on either the left or the right side, you know, on the belt. Or, I guess, the lapel. But, yeah, that's a good question, Peter. Let me see. I'm not even sure what a left-handed mic really would be. So, which uh... <laughs> It appears to be ambidextrous. Ah. Uh, I'd give my right arm to be ambidextrous. <laughs> <laughs> what did okay. You, sorry, Tommy. What did you say the capacity of that that extended uh, battery was? Well, that the one that comes with it, I think, was 1,800 milliamp hour. But they actually have one that's bigger now. Um, yeah, I just I just grabbed my ID 31A, and I believe it's the same battery pack. Um, and I'm looking at the capacity on this this aftermarket one I bought, and it's uh, 2,270 milliamp hours. So I would imagine that would uh, that would last uh, a fair amount longer than the uh, than the standard battery even. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah, and uh, I'm gonna get some 12 volt batteries. I've I've got my eye on a little portable 12 volt uh, lithium ion battery. I think I might get one of those ordered. I was kind of shopping around to see what I wanted to get. And uh, with that, you'll get 10 watts out of it on HF instead of 5. Oh, wow. Perfect. Yeah, and still have a real small battery, just a little jumper uh -huh. to plug in the side of the radio. So really, you're not adding much to your uh, weight load. Yeah, That's exactly. Cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, and if you wanted if you wanted the uh, the ultimate, uh, you get one of those uh, Biano Power uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries and hook that thing up and you can operate all day at 10 watts and not have to uh, worry about running out of battery power. No, no, yeah. no, Mike, that's not the ultimate. The ultimate is you buy a Tesla and you run a cable from the <laughs> Tesla to your radio. <laughs> well, not cheap old that, man that's compliant. not cheap old man compliant. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Okay, well, I have an email here that I would like to share with you. This came from our friend Elliot Eckerd, and I don't have Elliot's call sign handy here, and I don't remember it, but we've he's written to us quite frequently. He's a, mm -hmm. he's a broadcast engineer up in uh, New York, and so, you know, we, we've got a lot of things in common we can talk about. We had been uh, discussing back and forth about uh, radio and some of the early, you know, radio developments and such. And he sent an email here that uh, said, here is something interesting, and I will agree. Because the land at the time was hard to come by in the Netherlands, at one time Radio Netherlands built their curtain wow. antenna on a turntable so that they could rotate it to beam their signal in the desired direction for their program audience. Mm -hmm. Wow, those are, I believe those are wooden towers with a curtain array hanging from them. And you see down there at the bottom those circular tracks, they can just spin that whole thing like that. Um, Is that the sea or, or water around it? Looks like some kind of water back there. Yeah, that would make a really good ground plane. Yeah. Yep. Mm. But that's Particularly interesting. That's probably one of the world's largest rotators. Mm. Yeah, so that's pretty awesome. That's quite a feat right there. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. year this was, but it's a um, pretty long time ago. I actually looked it up, and I don't remember now. But it was, you know, sort of semi-early radio days that they did that. I've got a city lot here. I wonder if I could get by with something like that in the backyard. How many two by fours you got? Uh, not that many yet, but there's a Lowe's around the corner. Yeah. Well, if you could come up with some train track, you'd get your son to bend it in a circle like that for you and <laughs> lay it out in the back. And yeah, I, c I could see that really working out good for you. Yeah. I'm sure the mayor would love it too. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess you'd have to use bricks. So, yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, we're going to be back in just a moment. But first, let's get a message from MFJ. And don't go away, because we've got more to go. Introducing RigPi 2, the first major upgrade to the original MFJ 1234 or RigPi 1. 
complete RigPi 2s come with pre-installed version 2.0 RigPi operating system using the latest Raspbian Buster operating system compatible with the Raspberry Pi 4B and 3B+. RigPi version 1 owners may upgrade their units by purchasing a micro SD card or download containing the version 2.0 RigPi operating system. New MFJ1234B RigPi 2 units include the latest Raspberry Pi Model 4B with 2GB of RAM and 32GB micro SD card. RigPi version 2 is jam packed with features and comes with over 30 new features to excite the ham radio world. Here are just a few of the features of RigPi 2 OS Remote CW keying over the internet. Support for over 27 new radios has been added. Control push to talk and frequency from a Contour Shuttle Express multimedia controller. Control PTT, power on off, and relays with Flick Bluetooth remote switches. Support for changing antennas remotely with an Ameritron RCS 12 antenna switcher. Power amp control. For an added touch of functionality, connect a webcam to RigPi and watch your radio in the RigPi browser on your phone or tablet. On-screen sliders are included for adjusting AF gain, RF gain, power and mic level, and CW speed. Control 8 on-off devices or relays with macros using a special cable, and much, much more. If you've been looking for the perfect way to operate your station remotely, learn more about the new MFJ1234B RigPi version 2. Visit MFJEnterprises.com today. Something new from MFJ and Howard Nurse there. Version 2 of RigPi. You know, that is available, as it mentioned there. You can purchase uh, upgraded firmware on a SD card or uh, a download and update your RigPi version to version 2. But also the new ones are being built with the Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigabyte model. So you know the thing's going to perform better. Uh, plus all the other uh, added benefits there that the latest software has got. That's a, Well, it's always been a really interesting project, and it just keeps growing. Email, that's not the only thing they came out with recently. You were telling me something. What were you telling me a moment ago? Well, I think it has, it's been out for a while. But uh, after watching your uh, and Tommy and, and Ray's videos out in the parks, um, I think I got bit by a bug, and it's the POTA bug. Because uh, <laughs> to, uh, this Saturday, I'm going to be out at Park K6445 in the mornings. And I just so happen to have uh, one of MFJ's uh, verticals that I'm bringing with me this time, the MFJ2386 uh, vertical, <clears throat> just to see how I can get that uh, up and working. Mm -hmm. uh, it says it covers from 80 to uh, uh, 6 meters. No radials needed as long as I get it up there a little bit, 20, 20 to 30 feet which I do have my uh, tripod for. Um, and I'm going to see how that does. So give it a listen if you're a park poda chaser for uh, K6445 in the morning. Uh, there's seven hams who are going to be activating every park in St. Tammany Parish down here in Louisiana all at the same time. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. You know, when I was younger, I would chase the poda, but uh, not, not so much anymore. <laughs> oh wait a minute <laughs> never mind um did you ever have a photo finish <laughs> mind you though emil though you uh you want to keep one eye on the uh on the <laughs> antenna and the other eye on the park because uh, correct me if i'm wrong you've got these things called gators down your way <laughs> peter that park if you look at it on the map it's right at the end of a swamp in lake uh, uh, right inside of uh, Lake Pontchartrain on the North Shore here where I live. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no doubt I'm I'm going to be watching one one eye on the radio, one eye on that water, because I'm going to be surrounded by it pretty much. Mm, yeah, sounds like a good idea. Wow. Yep, how, good how, advice. How tall is that, that uh, vertical? You know, I think it's pretty uh, 
it's pretty tall. I want to say I've read somewhere it's like 20 feet <laughs> by itself, much less putting it on the end of my tripod way up there. But it's a pretty sturdy tripod. It only weighs seven pounds. Huh. So oh. and it, says it, it says it can survive like 75, 76 mile an hour winds, according to the manual. So I'm going to I'm going to take it out there and uh, see how it does. Cool. Ooh. We'll be looking to hear more about how that turned out. Well, this week, was it this week? Was it last week? I don't know. I did some experimenting recently here. We've talked a number of times in the past about Forest Mims, Engineers Mini Notebooks. As a matter of fact, we're giving away a set as part of the prize package on our 15th anniversary show tonight. I thought, might be a good time just to take a look at them. I have used these things over the years And there's some real valuable information in there, particularly for the beginner, because you can get started right away without getting bogged down in a lot of extra theory. So we're going to look at one that I do not have. It's the electronic formulas, symbols, and circuits. Now, you would expect, uh, yeah, it's got uh, schematic symbols in it. It's got uh, a lot of reference in there. It's got some formulas, all of that, but it's got some circuits as well. And the ones I want to look at here are bipolar transistors. You know, transistors are a building block for a lot of projects. Today, we might use integrated circuits, maybe a little more often because, well, there's more in one little package. But it all starts with a bipolar transistor. So let's look at Well, the first three examples he's got here, and just test these out and see how they do work. As far as says, the bipolar transistor is a three-terminal semiconductor device in which a small current on one terminal is turned into a much larger current on another. We're going to look at an NPN transistor here, a very popular one that you've probably heard of before. Is this right here. It's a 2N2222. Just a general purpose NPN silicon transistor. The first circuit we're going to look at is a basic transistor switch. We'll look at this one right here. All we need is a 9 volt battery, a single pole double throw switch, a 1K resistor, actually two 1K resistors, the transistor, and an LED. So I'm going to put this together, and let's see if this one works. Looking at the transistor here, one side is flat, and on 2N2222, we know that the terminals are, starting on the left, emitter, and the center base, and then on the right-hand side, collector with the flat side facing us. Now this could be different on different transistors, but that's the most common lead layout you'll run across. So we'll plug it right here on our breadboard. And we'll start with the emitter since it's on the left hand side here. We've just got an LED connected to ground. The LED has a flat side as well. And you'll also notice that typically One lead is longer than the other if you're looking at it as it came from the factory. So the longer lead connects to the positive side. The shorter lead connects to the negative side. Because this is a diode, current will only flow in one direction. So we're going to plug it right here. Let's see, from the emitter. And we'll go up to ground. Long lead here on the emitter, short lead on ground. You can see the blue terminals here are where we're going to connect all our ground connections. The red line of terminals here is where we're going to connect our positives. Next terminal is the base. On the base, we've got a 1K ohm resistor. So I'm going to connect from the base over to another pad here. On that, we've got our toggle switch, and I've just got a little common slide switch here. Three terminals, the center is the wiper or the common, the two outer leads 
or for each of the two positions. So I'm going to connect the center terminal of the switch here to the resistor and one lead to ground and the other lead to positive. And there we go. I don't know if you can see that. But we've got it connected exactly like it's shown in the diagram here. Then all that's left is one more 1K ohm resistor. We're going to connect that from the collector to our positive voltage. So, the collector is this terminal. We'll connect it to our positive bus. And now all we need to do is connect up our 9 volts. I've got a 9 volt battery right here. Negative to our negative bus, positive to our positive bus. And the LED is on. And that's with the switch in the positive position. Going to the positive voltage. Here, they are calling that high. If we look at our truth table, high should be LED on. Let's flip the switch. Now the switch is connected to ground, which they're saying is low. Low should be LED off. And you can see that's exactly what's going on there. Low, high. Next, though, let's move on to something just a little bit more complicated. A basic transistor amplifier. This is pretty simple to connect up as well. We've got a 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. We've got a 5K ohm potentiometer. Now, you might be inclined to think of that potentiometer as a volume control, but that's not the way it's used in this circuit. Forrest is saying adjust R1 to give best results. That's because this is being used as a bias control to set a bias voltage on the base of that transistor. Of course, we've got the transistor, and we've got a 1K ohm resistor going up to 12 volts. We're going to run this off 9 volts, though. And then we've got the outputs. The emitter is tied directly to ground. And the collector is where we tap our signal out, as well as where we put that 1K ohm resistor. And we're going to hook up our oscilloscope here in a moment and look at that circuit, see how it runs. Let's adjust the pot. Okay, now we've got an extremely loud spot. The yellow trace here is on the probe connected to our signal source coming from the audio oscillator. The blue trace is connected to the output of our transistor circuit. The yellow trace is set for 50 millivolts per division on the display, and we can see it is about one division there. Let's freeze this. It actually measures 56 millivolts. The output is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divisions. It measures 5 volts. So, yeah, there's quite a bit of gain there. Let's just do a quick calculation. The way we figure this out is we take the output voltage, which is 5, divided by the input voltage, 0.056. Forrest said this circuit should give us about a, a voltage gain of 50. It's actually close to 90 on this circuit. So we see the transistor amplifier really does work. Now let's take a look at our third circuit, the relay driver. Now I have used these numerous times over the years, especially working with microcontrollers, because you don't have much current or voltage coming out of those and driving a relay would probably load it down. Using this circuit right here, we can put all the work of energizing that relay coil onto the transistor rather than our input source, which is a microcontroller or whatever we were using. So let's look at how this is connected. We've got the input. Whenever the input goes high, that transistor is going to conduct, which will make the relay energize. So our input goes here, 
through a 1K ohm resistor to the base. Right here, 1K ohm resistor connected to the base of our 2N2222. And I've got a lead just hanging free here that I'll tap into the positive voltage when we're ready to test. The emitter of the transistor is connected to ground, and that's what we've got going on right there. The collector of the transistor is connected to one side of the coil of the relay and to one side of the diode. And you got to get the polarity correct on that diode. So if we look right here, there is the lead from the collector that goes to one of the coil sides. And we've got the other coil side, as shown here, is connected to positive voltage. And we've got our diode orientated, and you see the band right there on the diode. That's going in the direction of the arrow. So we've got our positive voltage up here. That means it can't flow backwards through that diode. The diode is only there to snuff out any spikes that might be generated whenever that coil discharges. And we've added one other piece to the circuit here. We've got the relay contact sitting out here. When we put a high here at the input, the contacts on that relay will close as it's energized, and that will cause the LED to light up. So let's see if this one works. And it does. Very useful little transistor switching circuit there. Three little 2N2222 NPN transistor tricks out of the Forest Mims Engineer's Mini Notebook, Volume 4. I highly recommend you get a set of these. Very handy when you go to experimenting and building your own projects. I yeah. got a comment on Forest Mims books. I, I, uh, I've always been impressed that everything's hand-drawn, like all the, all the symbols and schematics. And it's even done as if you did it on graph paper, which is what yeah. I used to use in college uh, for, for hand-drawing. Well, you can tell it was done before the age of computers. Um, and he, Forrest drew all this stuff. Gordo confirmed that everything in here was hand drawn by Forrest. Wow, they're all they're all so precise and pristine too. They just really nice job yeah. on. Yeah, I mean, you would think you know the text, and it looks like it's almost a font. Uh huh. It's, well, I was wondering if he used template or uh, uh, stencils because I, when I was first in college, we, we had to use uh, drafting paper and we had the uh, stencils for the electronic symbols and we had to draw our symbols using uh, templates. I've, yeah, I've still got mine. Radio Shack sold those for a few years. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I've got that those. and the ones for, you know, common schematic symbols and... Um, some digital logic symbols and such. So, yeah, those things were great, man, because before computers, uh, you could make... Just, it, just think about how many projects and how many things you would not have done if Radio Shack had never been. That's right. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I still have all It's of hardly my, uh, a show that comes by that somebody doesn't say that, well, I got that from Radio Shack, or I used to go down to Radio Shack and get this or whatever. Yeah, they gave me they gave me my first job when I was fourteen, working in the store. Yeah, have another drink, Mike. <laughs> Is it time yet? No. Yeah. Um, Tommy's got one too. This came in the mail today, not today, but this week, a couple of days ago. It made it in time. Would anybody know what this is? Mm, looks like a clog. <laughs> a club. <laughs> no, 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 clog. C O L G. Yeah, like a clog. like a shoe. Yeah, yeah, wooden footwear. Well, it would be a pretty small kind of round foot. Yeah, that would fit yeah. this. It does look like that, though. He's right. It, it is. I can't turn mine up because my stuff will pour out. <laughs> we we give up. What is it, George? It came from Finland. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Uh -oh. oh, it. it let me guess. Tamay's Tamay's in the chat room, so it must be from him. It is, yeah. and it's yeah. got some <laughs> some custom uh, wood burning engraving on here. What does it say there, Tommy? Well, on the end, like LTV. 
20, 20, 15 years. Go ahead. Oh, of it. Cool. T- Tommy, what's it say on the bottom? <laughs> 73, I think. I can't see. Uh, very. <laughs> you want me to pour my drink out here on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know your tricks. Very maybe, 7 maybe three. It's the latest Nokia phone. VY <laughs> 7 3. And then That's right really here, cool. it's got Morse code on it. Uh oh. Very cool. 7 3. Seven, three. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to watch the replay on the big screen so I can get a closer look at it. That's very cool. Uh, let's see if I can get. I'm not sure if my camera will focus on it. Uh, it focuses, but it's it's got a shadow, uh, so it's oh, hard yeah. to see. And uh, congratulations, I think, is in order for Tim May. We learned something yes. on the last sound check, Nat, didn't we, George? I think we did, yeah. And, and, I, right. and I wish I could pronounce uh, grandfather and Finnish properly, but I won't even try. But, um, yeah, congrats there, uh, Tim May. Yeah. Yeah, and congratulations, and thank, thanks for the cup. I really appreciate that. Yeah. It's really awesome. Really nice. And there was a tag on it, and I'm not sure. Cuxa, Casa, Guxy, Gooksy. I'm not sure how you say that because my finish is not very good. And apparently neither is Google's or Babblefish's. I tried to translate it. And the best I could come up with is it's Cook Pile Guxy. You should have focused on it. Emil, would you say that George needs to go to finishing school? Yes. Well, I have a letter oh, here yes. that, that came with it. And maybe now, you know, my finish is not really that good. And his English is improving because when we first... Uh, Kind of, I say met uh, online, you know, when we first heard from uh, Tim A, he was just getting started in English, and it's improving. But I'm going to try to read this, and I will stumble through it, and maybe you'll get the gist of what I'm trying to say here. Dear Sirs, George W5, JDX, and Tommy N5, Z, and O, your effort has become age of teenage I guess, yeah, we're 15. Uh, During these years, had followed your show from beginning when you were wondering how to get uh, W Land to small number of residences, and that was probably that was was Jimmy. Yeah, Uh, I could say and believe that it's quite number of hobby colleagues whom could say that. They have shared our trip together. We have been inside studio. We have sat in bench of park, eaten by insects in forest and camps, even sit in an airplane and enjoy the fresh show. All of us bring together uh, with great keep up and develop communications. I do enclose with this letter two remains, which... I wish to do along with uh, your exploring the hobby and work. Just remain that uh, goodwill and ham fun, what you have shared these in uh, past and hopefully coming years. You two have done long days work as voluntary ham ambassadors. And Cuxa and Finnish. Cooksy, or have you pronounced it? I'm, I, he's probably laughing at me over there for trying to pronounce this. Is usually fond of personally gear in Hunter's Nature Explorer. Originally, these these were handmade uh, by the users themselves for going along lifetime trips in the hills and valleys, especially uh, there in Scandinavia North. Nowadays, they're available in machine made from oak trees. So it is oak, Tommy. We were trying to decide, you know, what kind of wood that was. Anyway, uh, best 73s. Thanks, Uh, Tim A. We really appreciate this. Now we have something here in the studio that we can say came from Finland. So. Yeah, it's really it's really awesome. It's very it's very unique. I like it a lot. Well, very cool. Yeah, we were kind of you know he told us something was coming, and we really did not know because 
he had asked us, and he said he had a reason. He wanted to know what our shoe size was. <laughs> so we kind of halfway expected wooden shoes, but... My foot's well, way bigger than that. Yeah, there, there you was go, a, Peter. See, Peter was close. There was mm-hmm. a pair in there. So, But anyway, thanks to my... That's... Uh, cool. That's good stuff. Well, let's see where we are on the rundown here. It's time for an email, and this time from Tommy. Yeah, well, it's a, it's actually a Facebook post. Okay. And it's from our friend Mark Garrett, but it's one he forwarded from Bill Brown. You guys remember Bill Brown, uh, WB8ELK. He's the one that does the balloons. So we've interviewed him in uh, Huntsville a couple of times, and yeah. I think we had him on uh, – from Dayton before, and anyway, he's been on num- numerous times. But uh, the email goes that the Smithsonian Institute launched 11 APRS Sky Tracker Pico balloons from schools across the U.S. And he provided a link uh, to the Hab Hub site and the APRSFI dot site or site, and that's uh, the, what I gave the picture to George for. And you can see the list of them there on the right. Some of them didn't get very far, but some of them made it across the ocean. And it's, it's really fascinating stuff to me. And um, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't not really familiar with the balloons or have any interest at all, go check it out. It's really a fascinating uh, part of the hobby. And I hope to get with Bill and, and Mark sometime and maybe put, get my own balloon up in the air. Um, I know Peter. Peter did one one time. Um, They're not terribly anyway. successfully, but uh, now I've got cold feet about them because uh, I, wor- I keep worrying that they're going to drift in the path of an aircraft and cause uh, problems. None of them have so far, but you, you do worry a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you anyway, would probably. So anyway, it's really cool. Uh, cool technology. I hope to put one up one of these days. Maybe uh, something I can shoot for this next summer. Or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And he stays on top of those and usually lets us know what's going on. So. Yeah. They're they're fun to track. Uh I've seen posts about some of them on there. They Mark posts them in our Facebook group quite often. And I'll get on uh, I'll fire up my rig pie over here and uh, whisper and a lot of them you can see the signal on whisper depending on where it is. Um, so I'm anyways, I'm curious whether or not uh you have to uh, file a flight plan of some sort with the uh, FAA uh, when you launch them down there. I know you do have to have a permit up here to launch uh, any any type of balloon that goes above a certain altitude, um, but I'm not sure how it works down in the U.S. Does anybody know? Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think so, but I'm not 100 percent sure about that. I'll have to check into that. Yeah. Yeah. Here in Australia, here in Australia, we. Uh, I think if it's below a certain weight limit, okay, and the balloon is below a certain size, then uh, no permit is necessary. Uh, you don't file a flight plan because basically you've got... You don't know where it's going to go. It's going to go, okay. Um, but <clears throat> yeah. uh, it's, uh, you, there are a few, you know, you don't, you've got to be so far away from an airport, etc. So there are safety considerations you do have to take into account. So it's best to, to talk to somebody in the relevant department and, uh, you know, sort all that out, what the rules are in your jurisdiction before launching anything like that. Right. Well, we're going to be back in just a moment because we've still got more to go. Email's been holding one back here till it hurts. But we're going to find out about that in a minute. <laughs> no, it's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. The drummer reel. From the drummer. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Don't go away. Get out and be active with ICOM's new IC705 and its optional multifunction backpack. Now shipping. The IC705 is your perfect QRP companion as you have base station features and functionality at the tips of your fingers and a portable package covering HF 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. This compact rig weighs in at 1 kilo, or just over 2 pounds, with RF direct sampling for most of the HF band and IF sampling for frequencies above 25 megahertz. 5-watt battery operation with BP-272 
or 10 watts with a 13.8 volt DC supply. Modes include single sideband, CW, AM, FM, as well as full D-Star functions, a large 4.3-inch color touchscreen, and live band scope with waterfall, micro USB connector, Bluetooth, and wireless LAN, integrated GPS with antenna and GPS logger, micro SD card slot for data storage, it comes standard with the HM243 speaker microphone, and it supports QRP and QRPP operations. The perfect accessory for the IC705 is the LC192 optional backpack with a special compartment for your IC705 and room for accessories for soda activations or just a day in the park. Visit icomamerica.com amateur for more information about this and all the great ICOM radios. And we're proud that ICOM sent us the real thing here to give away instead of that cardboard box that I was showing <laughs> off a couple of months <laughs> ago. I just hate that I have to ship it out, though, so soon. Yeah, don't, get them, don't accidentally get them mixed up and ship the wrong one. True. Well, it could happen. I could see that happening. <laughs> uh, Peter, I understand we got some breaking news that, that uh, you just heard about maybe you want to share with us. Okay, just give us half a second while I quickly load this up. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I'll just look at the latest news from the Wireless Institute. And uh, uh, you, most of you would be aware of uh, the home of the Code Breakers, which is Bletchley Park in, um, uh, in England. And uh, our friends at Facebook have actually given... What was the sum? It's pretty amazing. Uh, do, 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 do. One million pounds. That's about, I don't know, 1.6 million US dollars, uh, which is probably $2 million Australian, uh, a donation uh, to keep the uh, Bletchley Park going, which is a great, unequivocally great on all, uh, all uh, uh, however you look at it. So uh, uh, well, Facebook gets a bit of a bad rap from time to time, but... Uh, Great to see some uh, making them making a contribution to something that's uh, of interest to us. And uh, in a future trip overseas, I hope to go to Bletchley Park and uh, have a look at it. It uh, looks like a very interesting facility. Oh yeah, well that's that is interesting news, and uh, <laughs> hopefully that'll all work out and things will settle down where we can go. Mhm. Oh, it'll come. We'll get over this. Email, you want to set this up? I already set you up, but I don't think people took it the right way. I know Tommy didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tommy didn't. <laughs> sure. Um, so, yeah, my my segment, uh, I did this segment until it really hurts. Um, <laughs> and it's all about standards and how to use those standards. You know, us, us uh, ham nerds, uh, all of us probably have heard in the HF bands, the uh, AM broadcast on 2.5, 5, 10, 15, and 20 megahertz, and there's even an experimental 25 megahertz um, broadcast from the radio station here in uh, Colorado, WWV. Um, they broadcast time standards, frequency standards, and my segment, this is a continuation, George, from I think it was episode 47 when oh. I had my ICOM 746 Pro. Now I have the 9100. There's a difference in the way it's adjusted. And I learned some things this time about what's in that signal. And uh, it's definitely good to know what you can do with this stuff. And that is what my segment is about. Hello, George, Tommy, Mike, Amateur Logic TV viewers. A while back, I covered the WWVB time signal, signal and how to sync your computer's time to it. This time, I wanted to uh, cover a little bit about the uh, WWV signal from NIST and the artifacts that are inside of it, what they include, and really what you can use it for on the uh, radio or other uh, methods since it's all about the standards. So pulling out the manual of the IC9100, in my case, they use the uh, zero beat method 
to uh, set calibration for the receiver. So uh, you can literally take the uh, signal that's all broadcast over the air by NIST and calibrate to a zero beat your uh, receiver's frequency. Since they pretty much keep a accurate uh, signal outbound, take a listen. <laughs> Besides the voice enunciated signal, there's also several uh, sub carriers with signals, binary coded decimal, as well as other frequency standards that are broadcast so that you can measure it against your equipment. For example, this is A440 for you musicians out there. away from the uh, center carrier there. And finally, 600 hertz away from the center carrier. There is quite a bit of documentation on the NIST standards and the signals from WWV and also WWVH, which I believe is the one in Hawaii. Uh, the first one being this uh, binary coded decimal, which is uh, 100 hertz subcarrier off of the uh, center AM signal. And yeah, it's uh, got quite the uh, design to it, and it just works. It takes about a minute to get a full um, date, time, all the way uh, accurate to the second based on the um, clock there in Colorado. So the second one is the cycle that they use for WWV um, and how they broadcast and alternate between the other frequency standards like the 500 hertz tone as well as the 600 hertz tone and also the 440 tone like you saw uh, me demonstrate. Um, so they give you that full hours worth of um, alternate how they alternate between the signals so that you can do what you want to do uh, and measure take measurements for what you are trying to adjust or measure I know as a musician I found it interesting and I learned something while doing this about the 440 that just so happens to be a musical standard the a440 um, standard so how they alternate in the timing of when they have the uh, audio tones there, and it's all covered on here, uh, along with the BCD time code at the 100 hertz subcarrier, which you saw could be decoded by um, free software. Neat stuff, Emil. That. Uh you know, you asked me to do it on my 7700, and I did, but I didn't get to shoot any video of that. I had it hooked into my uh, stereo system here through a mixer, and I've got a subwoofer on this thing, and when I approached zero beat there, man, I think the building actually was contracting and expanding with that. <laughs> it felt like an earthquake. Oh, yeah, you know. When you when you start transmitting between uh, one and uh, one and you know a hundred hertz, you can feel it. Oh yeah, Ooh. yep. Crack up the subwoofer. That's right. And yeah. I learned a little bit about that procedure too. I didn't know it 
and until you started pointing it out there and yeah I'm really, really happy they didn't sunset uh, you know those uh, broadcast or sorry those transmitter stations yeah uh, I was because concerned. Uh, they were talking about uh, yep. defunding them and yep yeah um, that would have been terrible if they would have done that yeah, yeah that's come up a couple of times I'm yeah. sure it'll come back around but I hope it gets bypassed again yeah I've kind of got my own thoughts on that whole issue i don't think they were really going to fund it i think it was a threat to try to get more budget but anyway because if they shut those down man look how many clocks would become useless (laughs) airplanes would be dropping out of the sky and everything yeah Yeah. we uh, here in australia we actually hear uh wwvh uh a little bit better than the other ones uh because hawaii is a bit closer to us yeah, you will yeah. hear H here as well. Uh, sometimes it'll be like you'll hear two different voices going on. You'll you'll hear, you know, mm. the male voice here, and you'll you hear the female voice way in the background. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. We we have a frequency standard uh, station W or sorry uh, CHU Canada, which is um, in the Ottawa area, and it's just on the top of the 40, 40 megahertz, uh, or sorry, the 40 meter band. And I can't remember the exact frequency. It used to be 7.333, uh, but they moved it up the band a little bit. Um, and I can't recall exactly what the frequency is, but it's just on top of the uh, 40 meter band. But um, it's nice to have them at, at even like 5, 10, 15, and 20 megahertz, I believe, is, is what WWV operates on. And it's kind of nice to have them right dead set on, a, on an even frequency like that. And, and I've kind of threatened to, to build, um, I keep talking about it, but I never do it, uh, a tuned radio circuit or a TRF for uh, 10 megahertz. Um, and and that way there's there's no um, mixing of, of signals like a super heterodyne. So the accuracy of, of receiving that signal is going to be exactly what you're receiving. Like there's no mixing uh, mm-hmm. involved with that with oscillators. So it's going to be uh, you know spot on so to speak. Um, but I've I've never got around to doing that yet. But apparently it's not uh, it's not very difficult. It's a pretty simple circuit. Would you use a phase lock loop or a crystal? Um, it's a, it's an actual tuned circuit, uh, oh, okay. you know, resonant at, uh, you know, 10 megahertz and it, it picks it up, uh, right at that frequency. So there's no, there's no mixing involved. There's no uh, phase lock loops or anything like that because that can mm-hmm. introduce uh, slight errors in the signal. Right. Um, mm-hmm. so if you're using that as a frequency source, you don't want any of that. Um, so you're, you're actually built, it's, think of it as, as a crystal radio for WWV, um, Mm -hmm. where it's a very simple circuit. There's, there's no mixers involved and you're just picking up the actual signal and, uh, Mm. and, uh, using it directly. And and George, one thing worth mentioning about in that segment, I know, um, is the software at the end, in the beginning that you saw. Mm-hmm. Of course, it was free software. It's me, right? But it was the um, <laughs> multi-PSK clock. And you can actually set your computer's clock from it. Once it syncs the time and gets the signal from your radio, it'll set your computer's clock to it. If um, I want to say it's uh, F6CTE is the, the maker of that software. So multi-PSK clock is the name of that software. I don't know if I put that in there or not. Cool. I, I, don't, I don't recall... So- that but maybe you did put it in there that's good to know though Spe- speaking of uh high accuracy clocks wasn't wasn't jimmy the torch making a high frequency standard yes I, and, I, and i don't know the results of that if he has finished it or not but he was i mean that guy was getting down to splitting Nat's hairs it was yeah you know, he was really um honing in on getting precise well, Mike, I understand there is a news item you've got for us tonight. Yeah, uh, I have a news item that came out from uh, the ARRL uh, bulletin, and it's dated uh, October the 6th. And it's it's announced uh, two more astronauts earned their amateur radio licenses. Mm-hmm. Um, Kayla Barron um, 
recently com completed her introductory course in June and received her basic ham radio operation, aeration, operations training in late September and received the, K, uh, the call sign uh, a Kilowatt India 5 Lima Alpha Lima. And then uh, there's also the European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Meyer, or Moore. Um, he passed his amateur, amateur radio exam on July 30th. And he is now a uh, Kilo India 5 Kilowatt Foxtrot Hotel. Cool. We can cool. Al al awesome. always use more astronauts in amateur radio. Well, it's it's good because uh, you know uh, I think a lot of times they they uh, I don't know if it's required, but they're highly encouraged to get their license so that they can operate the IIS when um, when on board. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, not operate the IIS, operate the amateur station that's on board the IIS. Yeah, I believe it's also one of the the other reasons is it's actually good for them psychologically because they're you know, in touch with kids and the like on the ground. Just out of interest, though, is anybody here in, in, um, in our group uh, actually ever worked uh, the ISS on voice? I've done it on packet, but not voice. No. I haven't. I have no. not. I have, I have not ventured into the whole satellite stuff uh, yet, although um, I, know, I know I've been trying to do a little arm twisting on a mill for this uh, project that's... I think I mentioned it to you the first time I met Tommy and George at the Dayton Hamvention. They had a booth there, the uh, Satnox project. Yeah, Satnox. Um, and uh, that's one thing that I was kind of hoping that Emil would get interested in, and it would kind of motivate me at the same time to do it. But I've I've been gathering up little bits that's required for it, and I think. Uh, aside from building like a turnstile antenna or something along those lines, um, I've got everything in terms of the uh, the radio receiver components, and it makes use of the Raspberry Pi and uh, an LNA, a low noise amplifier. Uh, so I'm thinking that might be that might be a cool build over the winter, uh, along with my other box of incomplete dreams <laughs> that I've yet to complete. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, that's on my bucket list. I think we all have a big box of incomplete dreams. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know. Sort of Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. And That's uh, right. Of, yeah. Yeah, it was probably good you tried to get email interested than that, uh, than Marty, because, you know, we know where that would go. <laughs> well, I know. Marty's winning the procrastination contest that him and I have together. I think I'm I'm edging him a little bit on the build for my, my BIDX40, which I've had since uh, I think I received it back in October, November of 2018. So it's been that long. And um, I, I added a modification to it. It's a small uh, automatic ink control circuit because... The uh, the Bidex, uh 40 does not have AGC built in, and I thought, well, that's a must-have. So, I've done that, and that's about as far as I've I've got with it. So, yeah. um, Marty, you're winning still. <laughs> well, I understand you had one other announcement that uh, you wanted to yes, give us just, tonight. Just a quick announcement, and I've been receiving because I subscribe to the email digests uh, for for these Yahoo groups, which are about to disappear, I believe, on. On December the fifteenth, uh, a lot of those groups have have rolled over to Groups IO. Um, but if you're still relying on Yahoo Groups uh, for the information, that's apparently going to disappear on December fifteenth. So this is kind of the last call for for uh, switching over to whatever whatever they've decided to move their group to. So if you're following them on on Yahoo Groups, uh, you're going to have to change. Yeah. And while you're on groups, I hope you may as well sign up for ours. Yep, that's right. Because all of the uh, the notices for for the live recordings and uh, you know a lot of folks aren't on Facebook anymore or Twitter. Um, so groups IO is is a, is another place where you can get the uh, the announcements for the Amateur Logic uh, Soundcheck nets, and as well as the uh, the live recordings for uh, for Ham College and Amateur Logic TV. Cool. Well, everybody, well, not everybody, but some of the folks in the chat room are getting impatient, and they're ready to win this radio right here. 
And that I've been, one. oh, wait a minute, that one, <laughs> that one. So we're going to give it away. We're, we'll be right back. We're going to just stretch our legs and we won't be gone long. At the end of each month, it's Amateur Logic's Ham College, the new show for those new to the hobby and those wanting to get into amateur radio. Which of the following is a purpose of the amateur radio service as stated in the FCC rules and regulations? That inductor and capacitor form a tuned circuit. That's how you tune the radio to the frequency that you want. The English language. We lived in town. I liked it. I, I listened to mine a lot. It was really cool because you didn't have to have a battery to power yeah. them. There's our homemade telegraph station. We can use it for long distance communications. Oh, like, uh, what, three feet yeah, here? across the table. The answer is B. Voltage was named after Italian physicist Alessandro Volta. We can see we're generating a little bit of electricity there. It's DC. It's always great to go back and get a refresher. It well, sure is. A lot of that stuff, if you've been a ham for a while like we have, you, you don't really think about a lot of that stuff that often. They didn't have electric screwdrivers in those days, so that's why we're not using ones. That's why we went choice. primitive with it. Yeah. So let's see if we can hear anything when we, uh, we fire off our spark gap transmitter. Well, we didn't build anything or blow up anything today, but... Uh, the night's still young. Uh, as bad as I hate to give it up, I'm going to give up this uh, IC705 that we've been hanging on to here and uh, showing you. I just got to say, I didn't get to keep it long enough before I had to ship it on out. It's really a nice radio, but we're going to be giving that away. That's going to change the, the soda and poda operations. I mean, you just... Unless you've had your hands on one of these, you really don't understand that exactly what it what it feels like, what what capabilities it's got. It's all band, all mode, including D Star. Portable runs off the same battery as your uh, ID fifty one A or uh, some other recent model Icom handy talkies. How, too many features to mention, but. We've talked about it, and I see that the unit went to sleep. Oops. That is an indication. I just need to keep this one here for myself and make sure that, you know, it's, <laughs> it's going to work yeah, okay. Actually, this one right yeah, here never actually, goes off, though. That's power-saving feature to save battery. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I set purposely at this one on an hour on the screen blanker there. So you'll want to... The person who's going to win this will want to set that back down to conserve battery life a little bit. So we got that nice rigs, complement of ICOM America. Plus we've got another, um, well, you're going to need an antenna for that. So, Tommy, you you know about the antenna yourself, don't you? Yeah, I do. I know that antenna very well. We, you're going to get a MFJ2289 Big ear antenna. You've seen it on the show quite a few times. I've used it uh, exclusively for field day, or for my exclusive field day antenna several years and made quite a number of contacts on it. Easy to set up. It's light, easy to carry around, it's easy to tune. Uh, there's a carrying bag that comes with it along with a tripod. And in addition to that, you're going to get some RG8X coax to hook it up to the rig. Uh, all that comes from MFJ. And uh, to power it, if you, it runs off the battery, like George was saying. <clears throat> but there's also uh, an MFJ 4115 12-volt uh, portable power supply that uh, you can use if you've got uh, mains power handy. That uh, power up to 15 amps continuous. Yep, and we've also got a set of headphones to go with it. Uh, the Heil BM-17 headset, and you've heard us talk about it before. We actually have had one here uh, on the show, uh, well, may have been last year. Uh, it's a great portable headset designed for emergency communications, but it's just equally at home with any kind of portable operations. Uh, it comes in a single or dual ear version, high efficiency speaker, so it doesn't take a lot of power to drive it. And it has a choice of microphone elements. You can get it with either a dynamic mic or an electric mic. That works good with 
some older ICOM rigs that could use that little extra bit of gain. And let's see, one other prize we've added to that. As a matter of fact, we talked about that a little earlier, and I've lost it. Not not me. I mean, I lost it a long time ago, but I lost the book <laughs> just a minute ago. It's And we looked at this book a little bit earlier, this one right here, Electronics, Formulas, and Symbols. But it's the Forest Mims Engineering Mini Notebooks, a great series of books here that used to be available at Radio Shack. You can get them today from W5YI.org. As I mentioned earlier, these were published by Master Publishing, the same people that make uh, or publish Gordo Study Guides. It's a, what is it, four-volume set here, even the, the transparent one. We've got it as well. Wow. You're going to be careful where you put that one when you get it because you're going to have a hard time finding it. True. <laughs> They're asking how long the coax is, George. Uh, I don't know. It's not real okay. long. It, you know, it's what you would probably use for QRP usage or portable usage. And okay. a copy of Getting Started in Electronics, also written by Forrest Mims. A perfect book to, to get you started off in electronics. All of these are, really. And you're going to win the whole set. Uh, our lucky winner is tonight. And it is... Time. I don't think we can put it off anymore. As much as I'd like to. Emil, you got your drum roll there? Oh, wait, that's my desk. <laughs> Unfortunately, I lost the winner here. So no, you did not. <laughs> I, I found it. <laughs> no, I really did. I. I Look for my paper. Okay, it. next we'll be announcing the winner next month. <laughs> <laughs> I think Terry just died. Uh, <laughs> uh, before the show this evening, Tommy and I got together and did the drawing because you know we have to verify that the the person whose name was pulled from the random pool there. We just selected a random number and scroll down to that entry. And that's the winner. We had to verify that, you know, it was a valid entry. And it is. We have heard of this guy before. I think he's active on the Facebook group. He, We may have seen him in the chat room before. Congratulations. Carl sounds definitely familiar. Clint Frost, W2BL. Clint is an extra from Owens Crossroads, Alabama. So next date over there. And I know it seems so familiar. I don't see him in the chat room there, but his his name has come up a number of times on the social media groups. He's I, I know he has commented on some posts and liked some posts and may have even uh, posted a few things on Facebook there. But Clint, congratulations, man! We'll be getting in touch with you right yeah, away. Yeah, congratulations! Here. You're gonna you're gonna enjoy it. I, I love mine. You're just gonna just be crazy about it when you get it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Who So, um, well, he's gonna really enjoy that. But we've got a well a number of consolation prizes here, but we got. A number one consolation prize here. I know a lot of people would like to have this right here. And this is the complete set of one, two, three, four, five, six. ARRL 2020 Amateur Radio Handbook for Radio Communications. You know, ARRL publishes their handbook every year. This is the 2020 edition. I got to tell you, I like this format. It, you know, it's, it's thicker than the old ARL books. But they break it out into sections here, so it's very easy to find what you're looking for. And just a lot of great projects in there. And you're not holding a, re a real big book, you know. Yeah, I like that format, too. It's easier the, to go they through. They were getting too thick, and they wouldn't stay open. Yeah. Um, mm. So... So, we're going to give away that complete set right there. 
And for that, we did a second random drawing. And Tommy, who is our winner for that? Okay, I was afraid you were going to ask me that. It's on my other computer. <laughs> the, here, I got it. Pete Klotzbeck, AF9FA. And I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Wanakee, Wisconsin? That sounds about as good as any. So Pete <laughs> Klotzbeck, Klotzbach. Uh, AF9FA, congratulations. AF9FA. Wow, Pete. <laughs> you would have really liked that radio, but hey, you can enjoy the books, I'm sure. Um, That's a, those books are awesome. You, If you don't have a set, you, you'll really like those. There's some great info in there. Yep. Yep. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think I started something. <laughs> Uh-oh. I didn't see what you started, but I probably wait, don't want to. Wait for it. All right, I don't know what I'm waiting on. What's third place win? Well, we have we have a number of wins yet. <laughs> Peter's going to get them if you don't watch out. Yep. <laughs> They're getting close. Well, here. Is this the one you wanted to look at? <laughs> I just happen to have a box here that has a, a lot of Ooh. ICOM swag goodies that Tommy and I harvested from Ray when we were out there at the park <laughs> shooting the I know the what video. harvest is. That's code for something else. Yeah. <laughs> So let's see what we've got in here. And we've got a good bit of stuff in there. So the first item is this ICOM. I don't know what kind of cap you call these. Mm -hmm. hat. But, you know, it's got... Looks the, like a Bushman, Bushman hat of some yeah. kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fishing. Good Kayak field day hat. Kayaking hat. Kayak yeah. mobile. You can... It's got the snaps on it. So you can go crocodile Dundee style if you can get it, <laughs> if you can get it snapped. Not but, quite uh, in the Cooper. <laughs> really nice olive drab hat there. It says all sizes. I know it fits me. Tommy says he's got the big head and it won't fit him. But <laughs> anyway, it's a boony hat. How we, well? Let's let's do another drawing out of the email entries for that one, Tommy. And then we're going to do some more drawings just strictly from okay. the chat room. So I guess I'm going to have to pull up the emails here because I don't have one. And if either one of y'all either one of y'all four want to say anything, oh, I for, I'm covering up Mike there. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. It's I can breathe much easier now. <laughs> I know you were going through the box. So I had to get it out of the way. So I'm just going to scroll down just randomly, and I'm going to click my mouse, and I'm going to look, and our winner is Grant Harris, KD8SKC. He's a general, and he is also from Michigan. Let's look down the box and see what else we got. Oh, I have a lot of these. And we've got more than one color. Mm -hmm. These, what do you call these things, Tommy? I think they're, ar they're arm sleeves. Arm sleeves. Yeah. If I can get one open here, we'll look at them. If I can't, though, you'll just have to imagine. <laughs> we can hear it. So there you go. Simple. It's some of these stretchy sleeves that if you're wearing a T-shirt, you can put this on. 
and you've added sleeves. You've made it into a long sleeve T-shirt. Well, they're good. They're good for out in the sun. Uh, yeah. Good field day things keep the sun off of you, and uh, they're that material that kind of wicks up the sweat. It's yeah. perfect for if you're a golfer. Yeah. Yeah. Any, anything outside, they're great. And they're comfortable I'm, too. Field day sleeves. I'm not watching the chat room, Emil. I'm afraid to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so we've got a lot of these. And I don't know. Let's. Uh, you got, I want you guys to figure this out. We're going to choose somebody out of the chat room. So what are we going to do? Y'all ask a question or something, and we'll just pick uh, randomly out of whoever answers. Tommy? Ask a question. Well, uh, all right. Figure out some way who to, who to choose out of the chat room. To Here, get I'm going to do a random number and get the one that's... Uh, All right. Nobody in the chat room yet. There's 95 people in there. All <laughs> right. Well, here. 59. KO4 BMD Stephen is 59. Tommy has right. a scientific method. Will you write it down? Uh, folks in the chat room, please stand by. We, we write your name on, on these little ping pong balls, and, and we'll put them in the basket. All right. Mike, you get to pick out the next one randomly. <laughs> randomly. Um, but, I'm looking at somebody with the handle Taxilian. T-A-X-I-L-L-I-A-N. Hey, did I pick a, a, a fellow compatriot? You may have. You may have. Nice. All right, Emil, you, yeah, you pick out the next one randomly. Okay, hold on. I'm going to move my mouse. I'm not looking at where I'm moving it. And I'm going to mouse over right down here somewhere and then see who's on. Oh, it's off the screen. Hold on. Let me try that again. <laughs> okay, I'm moving it over a little bit more. All right. I got KG five C X A. Kelly Casey. Yeah. Fort Worth. Texas, yep. Peter, did you were you able to do anything with Excel? I can I can randomly select one and just I'll just put my mouse over here, like so, and go down and up. And I've got KC nine UMU Mike. Mike Johnson. And you Claire, Wisconsin. And wait a minute. We're on computer. I don't have a mouse. I'm using a tablet here, so let's see. Well, that makes it truly random if you pick a, a random mouse, too. Yeah. <laughs> KD9FHJ. We've also got them in this style. So these... Uh, I feel like we're on one of those late-night infomercials. <laughs> yeah, well, we're not selling anything, although we could be. I don't know. All right, I don't know. I would, you, would, would you have something in a nice leopard print? <laughs> leopard? <laughs> well, we've got the camouflage. Here we go. Yeah, I can't even see that one. Emil could use ones that look like gator. There you go. <laughs> gator skin ones. All right, nice. so I, I got five pair like this. Let's Let's pick somebody... Uh, who emailed in an entry, Tommy. Okay. And while you're trying to figure that out, we're going to... Oh, I get the pick? Yeah. We're going to throw some other stuff in besides just that. I've got... I've got some uh, ICOM bumper stickers here. Oh. <laughs> that one's see-through. Yeah. That's uh, That's really not orange, is it? No, it's the. Uh, can you see it on my camera? Yeah, I yeah. can. Yeah, I've got one of those I picked up at Hamvention. They're yellow. Yeah, Tesla was Tesla right. Was right. Uh, nice night for a moon bounce. And yep. I've got not many. I've just got a couple of ham on board. 
And I've got a handful of howl sound, so we'll be throwing some bumper stickers and in with that as well. Let's see what else is in the box. Tommy, have you have you got us one yet? No, it's it's working on it. I have one. I have one in the ready. Um. Well, we're picking out one from the emails, though. Oh, sorry. Yep. Okay, here's one. Sean Skinky VE6NS from that Calgary. Yes, huh? sir. From, from uh, Alberta. Running out of paper. We're giving away the whole farm here. Yep. All right. Let's let's do another one from email there. It's a good thing your cat doesn't hear that cellophane rattling. Or that cellophane <laughs> rattling. Yeah. <laughs> go after the plastic. Oh, you waiting on me to pick it? Oh, do you want? I can do it. We're doing oh, another email here. here. I'm gonna. Me. I'm gonna do one. Okay. Here I got Ron Startzel, KB5 LNC, and he is an extra from Fredericksburg, Virginia. <laughs> we'll go way down the list. Way down. Douglas Noy, Noise, N O Y E S, N Zero B I D. All right. Oops. And we got one more pair here. Let's, let's do this uh, from the chat room there. And email, you look like you're not wanting to be called, so I choose you. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Hold on. I got to I got to get my random mouse set up. All right. Let me go from one side to the next. I'm moving it around to round. Scientific method. My mouse cursor is circling Mike's head right now, going past Peter and Tommy, and then it's going to go to oh. oh my goodness. KG0PL. Nigel. Nigel. Really? <laughs> Wait, like oh. Can we do that? <laughs> Is that, yeah. What was that for? The sleeve. sleeve. That was that was for the cardboard radio. I I saw him requested in the chat room earlier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we've got a few more things here out of the box. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you it was like a late night infomercial. Here, I've got a Billy Mays. I've got four of these. Or, who, who, who's the guy with the slap chop? Sorry, sorry, George. Getting carried away here. Uh, I come backpack. Yep. Uh, back, with back, bag. Strings, you can tie it up and you can throw it on your back. These are handy Perfect. for walking around the ham fest and collecting stuff. Or if the XYL kicks you out for the night, you can put some necessities in there. Right. So, Mike, pick us out uh, someone in the From chat the chat room. room? Yep. How about uh, Kilowatt Delta Zero Golf Bravo X-Ray? Brad from Denver, Colorado. Peter, why don't you pick us out someone else from the chat room there randomly? Yeah, here we go. Uh, w1 Charlie Alpha Hotel, Amazon, A M E S A N G, Alpha Mike Echo Sierra Alpha November Golf. So W1 Charlie Alpha Hotel. And we got two more. So we will choose. Well, we'll do these two out of the email entries. And I'll scroll down and pick the first one, Tommy. You can pick the next one. And I've got Kathy Bromley, W5JAY, who's an extra class, 
from Springdale, Arizona, I believe. Is AR Arizona or Arkansas? Arkansas. Okay, Arkansas. AR, it's Arkansas. Okay. Mike Chittenden, AE5IV from Arlington, Texas. Okay. All right, that's all of those. And I just happen to have some Heil Sound swag here. Nice. Now, these are going to be specific sizes because they're just what we happen to have here. You know, we uh, didn't really request any of this stuff. You know, this was just, uh, sorry, Mike. These were just collected around the shack over uh, a year or two, probably. But it's a Heil Sound t-shirt in the size medium. So anyone in the chat room who could wear a medium Heil Sound t-shirt? I'm out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyone can wear a medium. Just make a post in the chat room there. I know uh, a lot of hams would really like something larger than that, but uh, <laughs> sorry, medium's all we got. So if you can wear a medium. K3YO, the first one that said something. There okay. James McCusker, Warrington, Pennsylvania. I only had one shirt, but I've got three hats, and these are... Small to medium. They're flex fit, but it says small to medium. So if you're interested in a small to medium hat, just say something in the chat room there. The hat needs a friend. You, John, you K2 wear a small to medium hat. Please come now with your name phonetically, your call <laughs> sign phonetically, your name, and your location. <laughs> Tommy, Kevin, you sound like you got some experience with that. I think I saw Sue first. Did you Sue, see Sue medium hat. Okay, you, saw that. All right. you saw that? Well, that's okay. If John wants one, we got one from him. Uh, Sue, we've got one with your name on it. Yeah, KD2 QBB. Yeah. Okay, yeah, K2BAG's got one, and so has one. K2QBV. Nancy, I think Nancy was the one right X. after Sue. All right. Well, Alpha uh, Charlie 9, X-Ray Juliet. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and on all of these, we're going to include... One of these previously unreleased. These are the Dayton Hamvention 2020. Not oh, yet distributed wow. for obvious reasons. Yeah. Amateur Logic bumper stickers. Go ahead. Custom Ooh. created and supplied from VE3MIC Photoshop Labs. <laughs> nice. Amateurlogic.tv social media for hams. And it's got a QR code on it too there in the TV. Ooh. Nice. So everybody who wants something, we're going to throw one of these in with your prizes tonight. And we want to thank ICOM, MFJ, Heil Sound and W5YI Master Publishing for making this contest possible. A big thanks to Ray Novak, too, because yep. we really mm -hmm. harvested some swag here in addition to a great radio. How long did you have to tie Ray down for? Uh, when we were loading up the vehicles after shooting that IC705 video, this just kind of fell into the back of my Explorer. Fell out. Fell, yeah. off the, fell off the back of a truck. <laughs> yeah, actually. He kind of accidentally got put in the wrong truck. Yeah. He actually nice. said, here, y'all take this and give it away. So. Yeah, Ray's, uh, Ray's awesome. Yeah. 
Uh, by the way, uh, you should mention, obviously, that uh, ICOM, MFJ and all the other sponsors aren't just supporting us for the, this episode, but have been supporting us for the best part of 15 years. Well, and that's, uh, that's a great contribution. I don't know how how many years we've been gone been going a number of years with no um you know no kind of support or prizes or anything but um mm -hmm. they stepped up Icom and MFJ I don't know how many years now but it's been it's a, been quite a few we yeah. really appreciate every single one of them too yeah. yeah so I thought just appropriate to thank them for their support over the years yeah absolutely mm. yeah. So thank you. Without their support, we may not still be doing it. You just don't know. It was well anyway. It was starting to get expensive, <laughs> and then we've well we've invested a lot in equipment and um, supplies and stuff over the years and bandwidth and it was it was starting to add up. So we're glad that those sponsors stepped up and helped us out there and. And we have no problem with supporting any of those guys because we use their products. We really believe in them. And, you know, we just thank them for, for doing this. I guess we need to wind this one up, and I'll get to packing up stuff here to ship out to our winners. It, that is if you don't want me to keep that radio. I can keep it now, and you won't have to worry about, <laughs> you know, meeting the delivery man or anything. But I doubt that's going to happen. But again, congratulations to was it? It was Clint Frost. Yep. For winning the IC seven hundred five, Clint, you're going to enjoy that. And to Pete Klosbach, AF nine FA for winning the AWRL twenty twenty radio communications handbooks and let's go yep. around here and just uh, get final thoughts from each person here I want to thank everybody that's been watching for 15 years or well actually everybody that watches now if you've only watched one show um, appreciate you guys uh, we wouldn't have been here this long without it and I appreciate all you guys on the show with with me as well we really couldn't do it without y'all too so appreciate all y'all too and uh, the sponsors MFJ, ICOM, and the ones we've had in the past uh, all made it possible. So it's been a fun ride, and still buckled in, still headed to the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and I, I will echo the sentiments there. Thanks to everyone who's watched over the years, and thanks to Tommy and Jimmy and Peter and Emil and Mike and. Uh, Terry and everyone else who's appeared in, you know, some of these episodes over the past 15 years. We've had some good contributors and good hosts, and you know that's that's really what it's all about is the content you can put in. Yeah, we're not saying that it's always everybody's cup of tea, but we try to spread it out and have a variety of show so that if you don't like one thing, maybe you won't like something else either. Or, yeah. However, that and I, I, I did miss. I would like also like to thank the people that aren't on the show that help out too. Marty, mm -hmm. uh, all the people that help with the uh, the net we have. And, uh, Jeff, uh, and Dan, Jay, Jay, Dan, Brad, and Eight PC. Uh, anyway, anybody that's helped out at all, it's you've all kind of helped it all make make it possible. Yeah, uh, a great achievement, guys. Fifteen years. Great of you to start the program 15 years ago with Jimmy. And, uh, you know, hosts moved in and out and it's changed. But uh, uh, it's, um, uh, I think it's it's contributed greatly to the hobby, probably brought in a lot of people into the hobby, which is good. And, um, you know, I, I keep thinking often when I think about the format. And just, to, just as a very quick aside, um, I just recently entered into a competition for uh, trying to think up new formats for TV shows. Now, my entries weren't picked up, but I did toy with the idea of um, entering in a, a, the, the, you know, the format that was developed by yourselves. Uh, reminds me a lot of uh, A Prairie Home Companion, that kind of Saturday night, evening, 
uh, get together of people just with a common interest and it's not, there's no pressure, everybody's just relaxed and having a good time and discussing what they're interested in. And I think it works really, really well and you ought to be commended for coming up with that. Well, thanks, Peter. And we really appreciate all your contributions over the years, too. And we hope you'll join us back here again in the not-too-distant future. And, uh, you know, check in, let us know what's going on. If well, as you know, I'm, I'm starting to play a little bit in the astronomy play, uh, uh, area. So maybe I might be able to come up with something in that area that might be of general interest to people. Um, but, yeah, we'll watch this space. We'll see what happens. Okay. Ooh. Email. Well, the most important thing is keep it cheap. Oh, yeah. It'll be cheap. cheap. I promise you. Yeah. And, well, uh, words for the wise. That's right. Keep it cheap. And uh, don't forget, try to catch me on the air tomorrow morning. I'll be on the po parks on the air down here. K665, if anybody, I'm sorry, K6445, if anybody's uh, following and doing the POTA thing. And uh, we'll be on the air for at least two hours, maybe three. And what, ba what bands are you working, uh, Emil? It's going to be, well, in the morning, so I'm thinking 20 and 40 is probably going to be the best, but the, the antenna and the rig is capable of 80 to 6 meters. Mm hmm. Okay. So it could be anywhere in between. Okay. All right. Okay. Mike? Uh, well, we just had our Thanksgiving on, on Monday. Um, so that's out of the way. And I guess the next. The big thing is Halloween, and uh, the temperature's been dipping down. Uh, well, a couple of nights, it, it did go below the freezing mark, and it was uh, basically uh, 3 degrees Celsius this morning on my way to work. So it's getting cold enough to do antenna work. In fact, I'm just getting ready uh, to have my daughter go up and install my discount <laughs> antenna up on the roof because we, we had to abort to mission last fall because uh, hornets were, were trying to nest uh, up in the corner where on the eve uh where the chimney is and that's where the uh the mast is for the uh for the dipole or sorry for the discount antenna that's going to be installed so so it's been sitting out on my deck uh pretty much for for a year now and uh, hopefully uh i can get her up on the roof and she can she can she can do the work and install the antenna and and hopefully the hornets are gone now so yeah, I haven't seen any of this year buzzing around up there. So uh, we've had some really uh, heavy frosts, uh, you know, for probably the last uh, week or so. So they're probably all gone away for the winter now anyway. So uh, the leaves are, are in full color now, and, and they're starting to drop. So uh, we're just about peaked uh, for, the, for the fall colors, and, and that's... One thing up in my area that a lot of folks uh, travel up here for is to have a look at the uh, the fall colors, and uh, it's it's almost peak. So um, it just if we if we get a storm, they're all going to blow off the tree, so it'll be gone by then. So anyway, that's all I have. Okay. And congratulations on uh, 15 years, and hopefully it's another 15. Well, we're shooting for it. We'll see. We'll see, but y'all keep watching. We'll keep making them. That's what we always say. Seven three, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight, and once again, thanks to the great sponsors. Seven three, who, who helped out with the contest. And we will see you at uh, the middle of November for the next episode. Seven. Yeah. So it's hard to believe we're already in November, almost in November now. <laughs> yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. Seven three. <clears throat>
in three. George, another fantastic project from the bench. Thanks, Jim. I always enjoy doing them. I love them, I tell you. Yeah, we appreciate everyone who viewed episode four with us today. Nice. This was episode three, so I don't exactly know how you watched it. <laughs> I was just thinking, yeah. this is incredible, isn't it? <laughs>